we're going to get right to it. Hi, everybody. I'm Steve Carl. I'm uh, doing these weekly Sunday readings to entertain everyone while we wait for the pandemic to be over. Looks like it's going to be a long wait. <laughs> um, but I haven't run out of poems yet, so I probably will at some point and want we'll to do something else. But um, till then, I hope you're enjoying this. Um, so today I'm going to read poems that were written in 1994 and 1995 when I lived in San Francisco. Um, and these are poems that were not uh, otherwise collected into books, although a couple of them were in um, different magazines that I submitted to at the time. So um, I'll talk about those as I get to them. So the first one is called The Inevitable. Ballistic, that is, releasing ballast. Bend thrownness into a weapon, grown weary of facing facticity, and bludgeon us like the appalled far shooter. Falling angel kid, a play. Time has told you that it has helped to kill the choice at night. You find the rain recidivist, imprison it for life in your body. This is your life sentence. It ends in a period where period, as of old, means the span of sentence it marks. Your presence breaks into the room and recedes like a ceaselessly shoring wave showing up time. Foist impressions. <laughs> this elusive cage when entering the left lung becomes breath. This repetitive language when established becomes missionary. This window is set at an oblique angle and forms a short hand for impressions. This mirror reproduces the simple pattern of guesswork out of eye. This tally sheet draws chalk maps of closure. Water dream. The fall and retreat of water has parallels. Instantaneous infinishment away sometimes before the word dries on the walk, drying into islands of line. We will this so, but shall it on our account? Washes up shells, ossifies onto. The slow currents of time sound as alarum for the drift casters. In the receding grasp of tide, seaweed hides. A green salt caress conceals each from unsure other. You are this sunken cloud drawn upside down in the sea. I am that roll and ebb lingering with moon on shore. This one's called The Ontology Ward. It's for Adam Cornford. Uh, the reason it's for Adam Cornford is because it uh, references William Blake. Uh, Adam Cornford was my uh, mentor and teacher for the a Blake class that I took when I was going to New College. So um, I was thinking of him while I was writing this poem that has references to Blake in it. A mad cancer languishing in our sterile bosom, illogical, he dances an anguish to unhope most for whom hope is a rope of a void. We, his sublunary, sublunatic shadows, assess his success, reduce his children to copper and paper and measure by mystic matrix and maya. He rides a liney wire to eternity, 
sends telegrams to the loss in us, the armor's horizon, the lover. Uh, so that one and this next one uh, were published in First Intensity number six. This one doesn't have a title. As if or though lunching on silver, joined under a new mood, be launched. Testimony swells, elevated or oceanic, blanching the ranks of the disparate. The prodigal tense returns from the past, breaking perfect in its incision, its circadian motion invading its pilot's panoptical helm. We re-arrive in wordless echelons. To see through floods is hard. The buzz of a mnemonic operation squares one away. It is I. I now, I must rest in the clay of earth you've left the immediacy of for an else where I'm only guessing at. This personal snakes into ineffable, a braille of blindness selving around, bravely awaiting some texture of meandering. Within the meanness, neuralgia, mix a makeshift shadow, it's me, always a word ahead of itself, outrunning music as a lava flow, fingers tipped with curiosity, printed with whorls of desire, a voice, a verb in time intense, the muted mood, esper, substantial, questioned in common, borne up like a mountain, its lake. This one's called On Linguistic Correctness. This rigid insistence on correct speech of the other, code words, speak English, seem to veil self's unwillingness to listen. We don't want to hear what you mean, so say it this way. The Kabbalah factory churns out cheap imitations of utterance from politicians, code word, anti-polysemitic, a problem of translation, no, listen to me, code word, utter, don't ask me if what I'm saying is, the silent language is not a host, does not tongue tie, it meets its alter ego and speaks in a new third language made up on this ground. Code word, hint. Are you going to finish that sentence? Because if you're not, I'll eat those words. Code word, linger. Contrition like such movement, no metronome, clutches at stranger straws, crushes open fragrant hues, the dying the open dying floral effusion, a washover of wax. Let sleep the force, ill used as leverage, holding swag, hangs pendulous over proceeding, purifier, pyre of fire. These peripheries pull mind into expansion, the inner immense, center a sunrise vortice of entire. harp yet. Swaddle warmth. The downstroke captures rapt ascension all flutter as slightly more solid sky drops. Traces empty the knot of things, the tangle enveloped. Outer age holds fast. Confluence of two mysteries Efface two explanatory systematologies. This 
wheel. In my weakened state of grace, I face the test. The rest of time combines to pull the open homewards. Luminous intervention needs to be acknowledged. I pass along a short homage and sail past, as in Tibet. Perhaps another mammal knows what is and's not, is not charged with guarding it, simply moves among it. Not a hindrance, weakening is wakeful key and clue, a walk in color, love. Ring of rank rests, a wheel atop the warrior cut free from war to roam in sophic earths. This one's called The Body. I long to talk circles around myself, an impersonal personification, an egoless window, windowless ego. I could go through with it. I'll walk through eye of wind, swivel to reveal attention, stop in whirl, wind to time wisely, Quote, unquote. Imagine being ill at ease everywhere you feel at home. Detection by the private I of the fetishized body or a notion such as, as such. Results in the arising of questions of category, construct and extract in short organization. These are just suggestions. I want to try on the uncomfortable body. I've forgotten before I knew it wasn't the only one, but the Latin endings get in the way heavily. Type a line up out of that or let accumulate till later. There give selves beyond selfish, self within selves, a signification set up to careful arrestees a continuum of arrogance sucks up as sponge, compassion towards its negation, its within, shunned corridor of system. Wake me up as I might sleep more familiarly in a made bed I own. How many hours count as napping if I'm couched in luminous, My salacious opinion gives grunt to the long shorts, sounds great to the short longs, disguises a needled epiphany, pricked wind a partitioned breath. The afterthought schemes me, each entrusted assurance may roam through yet, your sails many days buried under mountains of airless regulations. The sheer variety of eyings risk history to tripod concepts, the clandestine erection of Babel. Nothing takes time, rather time takes all us things into its passing, bringing them to pass as well. The calling waterfalls, a keep off the grass sign of public homeopathy held offered aloft by the proud earth and capped by the opening canopious sky. The odd idea of taking refuge in the body, not fixed as on the page. What sleep is doing to the uncivil. Cold again in your bare midst when that's not being used as a perfume product label. I enrapture a continuity. I espouse housing. You know there's a limit to finitude they've set. An intransigent susceptibility to, to dying, nesting under cupboards. In kitchens, it's a cinch to find and finally to
Here's a weird one. <laughs> it's called an imp's piety. Where wends the statued imp, the storied torsion of his lonely limp? In the woodbine with dubiety, a slow triblet leads his gratulant head to see. Tusker, your tremolo acts as unguent to the unseemly croon of letter carriers grew. Biss us, you miss us at the twist of vermicule day. Your apothems no stratagem for frustulous play. The zygote takes cover in parasitizenship, big. The nascent traces flummox the whirligig. Where wends the statued imp, the storied torsion of his lonely limp? Blood gets into his jokes most of the times. From his nilpotent congress he maketh paradigms. Not a piece from his hutch is issued into groan. The mash of his martyries all we all own. Implier, my mudra can seal a bright place. On Agret's turbillion, no peacock disgrace. The least unary parboiling has Helminth delayed. If fescue meets phyton, diapsid's tirade. Where wends the statued imp, the storied torsion of his lonely limp? Told you it was weird. This one's called Post Despairs. Slightly less weird. Electrophobe and laughing charges into the dark of cyberdias, done with seizuring daisies. Political content unzipped suitcase for Siberia sewn up, the lining of living trajectory to Mexico, the linen of Levin, a stunning instructional calliope, often forcing a break, await the wangling of traitors, the order in which the world stands is new. Basted now, I'm embroiled, Someone bathes me. I seek balance on a shrinking singularity. It eliminates all multipliers. This one is called Una Libra. It was, um, it's an erasure from uh, that same textbook, I think, from the early 20th or late 19th century that I've read some other work that I managed to grab out of. I got a lot of mileage out of that book. <laughs> How much the moon can see. The moon keeps one face of the earth. One per moon could be from the earth, can surface. A slow oscillation of a celestial body likened to balance. It comes to rest comes from the Latin. The moon seems to rock slightly as a result. In latitude, the moon is tilted. The earth leans to see at one time the South Pole and the change of seasons. In longitude, the moon's elliptical. It moves faster. We can see farther around the moon at each edge if orbited in a circle. Daily libration is produced by Earth. We are elevated from the center. We can see one farther west moonrise at moonset. These are a late age of artifice. We find 59% of the moon forever hidden. Of earthbound humans, only our American astronauts have surface. a sounded hieroglyph or a sounded hieroglyph. 
there's a hidden P, there's a hidden T in there. The slick lucidity of every syllable's murmured dialectic until the Aufhebung and a return put into a form in transit called real. Audition equals the ability to hear sound not physically present. Written alphabets, a Baroque form of rhythm. Music itself, part visualized pattern breaking its silence. to the summer solstice. Whirled through the spaces in a vast circle, in darkness only half the time, we have sense only as energy is. The sun, a huge flaming globe, showering out into spaces, feeds energy to our earth. Human beings or animals breathe show you are alive in grief, aware of the teaching night's nearing. They have been interested in getting light when most of the other flowers are gone. One trick that succeeds is to turn any process which moves something into unsettling preoccupation, abstract green stuff that makes things go, as we shall presently see. Evening will appear to come early. Plants act as though the day is longer than it really is. The sunlight in which we grow is very intense. Leaves and bark and stem. Our lungs and the blood in our lungs. Without this light, nothing could be alive. A sleep stopped into lucid wake. The future may be worth doing. Uh, these next two were part of a planned series on, um, and I can't remember whether it was the Indo-European roots or the Proto-Indo-European roots, um, but I only I only wrote two of them, and then for some reason I gave up. <laughs> I don't remember why that was. Um, but anyway, these two were published in uh, Electronic Experioticist number 10. So the first one is um, the root MTR. Take the necessary approximation and shine to the whispery beam, cloud speed metered over a matrix of wiring, asphalt crochet as if of safety photosynthesized theft. It's an ordinary portent, like leading in the barrel and the deadpan flash of a cradle or clash of intemperate tongues in time, history clocked analogically, yanked into syntax, pulled under the Damoclean clouds. The madly erasing brain is an impermanent ferment, an already ironic icon we're Rococo cro Magnon, dragging the belabored incomplete, corrupt intentions budgeting verbatim. Diagnosed innocent and close upon some final quiet lightning, apparently. And this is the root STA. Irony gone awry hope for this old boat goes uninhibited and don't return. I've never been. A false representation made in appliance for status of thinghood, cheap essential scenery. Static is a cup of water, but over the rim it's soupy to behold. I'm spilling it. Lo, I hope the world is a bigger enclosure the way the air gathers in trickles of smoke until it's optically intangible. I'm a frustrated layperson in six disciplines. To grasp, you must reach. 
and it's farther. So much to dislocate, so much dislocation to do. It's been done that fashion since the 19 teens, this tradition of progress. Only a bad liver detracted from her inner beauty and some negligibly inert gases. Daddy's pandemonium cleared the cobwebs and we set to. Each line at least achieved a mute internal consensus, got on with its bad self. They called the establishing movement surreification. The bomb, swathed in trigonometry, tenanted a purple standard, a kind of franchisement cleft at this late date. And then these next two, these last two now, uh, are a pair. They go, they go together, although they're separate poems. And they were published in Mass Ave Number no. One, uh, which was edited by uh, Daniel Bouchard in 1996. The first one is called Sonata, and it itself is in three parts. Designated A, B, and C, so. A, four feathers gauging the temperature, the definite negative of sophistry swayed. The recollecting of predators predates catastrophe, impending balloon of rapture. Clouds circumstanced in our outline of nerves cycling outward of time. A destined item of morbidity challenges angular based boxes and acquittal of honking and clitic command. B, squelched razor descendant, mental appendage, a cash crop of feminine cigars. Cartographic intangible promoted as monstrous. Restive inhibitor, belated canonical artifice. Balinese Catalyst, C. Forth from its perch, built well into tonight, the part moon brandishes itself. And then the last poem is called Reprise. Forth from its perch, built well into tonight, the part moon brandishes itself. If you come any closer, it'll give you an epiphany. Is the wind now mimicking mammoth coasting machines when we are only ourselves dense and roughened air? Oh, for a sky in time to become as blue as that of space. Thanks. So if anyone has any questions, feel free to post it in the comments in the next minute or so. Um, so yes, yeah, so I think this was the 14th of these series in this series. A long, long number of weeks. And like I said at the beginning, it's probably going to be a long number more. So. <laughs> um, so I, I already know what I'm going to do next week. Um, in 1994, I wrote a set of poems, 64 poems, based on um, the, the Chinese text called the I Ching, or the Book of Changes. Um, so I'm going to read that in its entirety next week. So they're short poems, only six lines each. So um, I don't know. It shouldn't take that long. <laughs> it may take longer than this one did, though. So. Um, so uh, I don't see any questions, so um, we will call it a day. And uh, so thank you very much for listening and everybody take care, take care of yourselves, take care of your friends and neighbors and family and loved ones and everyone else that you come across. And uh, we'll see you next week. <laughs>